Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Don't mind the messy hairdo. It is early and cold, and we're going to the junkyard. Here's another video. Ah, can't see because I'm in the way. It's a 2012 Malibu. I was gonna pick it up, fix it, flip it, as per I normally do with these Ecotech cars. But this one is a 2012 fully loaded 1LT. 1LT is the fully loaded uh, four cylinder version where 2LT is the fully loaded V6 version. Except for, oddly enough, this one doesn't have uh, sunroof, heated seats or leather. So I think it was a 1LT ordered a specific way. I don't know, I gotta look through the RPO codes. But, excuse me, <clears throat> it's cold out here. Sugar says hi, hi Chevy. Hi, Chip, baby. You want to come over here and look at the camera? You want to come over here and look at the camera? Look. Pretty girl. Yeah. Anyway, uh, this is exactly as we bought it. You see, I got to wrench some tools in here. I literally, the intake was already off. Valve cover's in the back seat. I pulled this connector off, these two wires, unbolted this, and uh, just started taking the cam sprocket bolts out. And I was like, ah, oh, crap. I was going to make a video on this car. So, uh, give me a second to set it up, and we're pulling the head right now because I have to go grab another head for it. Uh, so let me find a spot to set this camera so you guys can watch, and uh, probably time-lapse it. By the way, as far as Ecotechs go, I have seen just about everything done to everyone ever. Like, I've worked on a lot of 2.4 engines. I'm talking all the way from, or 2.2, two, 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 four, two, oh. I mean, all the way from like 98 when they started them in the Cavaliers, all the way to when they stopped this particular block, I think. I don't think the 1618 share this block, but all the way to this, to the end of this, which was the 2022 and 2420 20 being turbo, 22 being non VVT, and 24 being VVT. The only thing that changed on them was the head, literally. That was it. Um, but I've never seen this. Now, what you're seeing there is these rocker arms have literally exploded i mean this thing had he had to have been holding it to the floor when it came apart i've never seen this i mean you could see bearings and and i mean there's just all kinds of carnage in here i've never ever seen that happen to an ecotech before so that's why it's getting a new head this one not i go buy a good head off a wrecked car 50 bucks why would I pay a large amount of money? Oh, I guess I should have told you guys this. Uh, the biggest reason I let Justin have this is because uh, it has 111 XXX. I don't remember what it is. It's 111 something when you turn the key on. Uh, it's got new tires on it, new starter, new. I mean, it's got a bunch of. It's got a bunch of good new parts. The guy, I we had to put new tires on it. The guy took his new tires off, sold them, and took the catalytic converter as well. So I've ordered one of those as well. Uh, but this car should be running in the next couple of days, easily. Um, I mean, realistically, it'll be running today. Absolutely. If I go get ahead for it, if this engine doesn't have any piston damage or block damage, uh, this car will be running at the end of today. It's just it won't necessarily be drivable on the road without the catalytic converter because, you know, noise laws and, and emissions and whatnot. But uh, as soon as the cat comes in, on the road, Justin goes. So let's go back to our time lapse here. The head's just about to pop off.
It's coming out. Let's see if I can. Of course. <laughs> this is not easy to do by yourself. I can tell. I have so much respect for people like Matt with Deep Creek. And whoever else does this by themselves, because it is a pain in the rear. Okay. Oh, we're just gonna go. Nope, we're not. Can we get in here? So this still has the exhaust manifold on it because like I told you guys, the guy had uh, cut the cat off. There we go, get it off the valve bit. Somebody's already drained all the fluids out of it. I want you to chain. Got, I dropped the chain down man. No, oh, it's passed. What am I hanging on then? Sorry, didn't mean to do that. Hanging on somewhere here. Cam sensor that I can't necessarily get to yet. There we go. Get out of there, little guy. Really? What is your freaking problem? Oh, Are you caught up there? No, no, and no. So what is your friggin' pro? Oh, no, it's on the block. Oh no. Oh no. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Well, bad news is we need a whole engine. <laughs> oh man. Just wait until I can show you guys this. Wow. I'm not gonna lie, I'm impressed. This poor engine. I don't know why I can't get the freaking engine. You guys just wait until Justin sees this. Really? Come off. You're making me angry. Stupid push tab. What now? Can you even see it? Kinda. Look at this crap. Piston one, full of holes. Piston two, also full of holes, but crooked. <laughs> Look at the liner. The freaking cylinder wall is busted. Three, looks fine. Four full of holes. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm telling you, I ain't never seen one do this before. He had to have been standing it on the floor. This thing had to have been spending seven grand when it blew. Wow. I took the bottom of the head. 
Justin's not here yet, so. <laughs> Look at that. All the valves have broke out of it. Oh my God. <laughs> oh man. Well. God, that's funny. <laughs> Holy moly. I ain't never been so impressed in my life. Okay, well, this poor 111,000 mile freaking block is uh, reduced to nothing but parts. I got alternator, AC, tensioner, timing cover, uh, oil filter cap, oil pressure sensor. That's a knock sensor, I think. Another sensor there, ground strap starter. Water pump, water pump tubing, and thermostat housing crap. Um, yeah. Got a, got a bunch of parts here, but Lord have mercy. I am just so impressed that it it had to been going fast. To, to What it do, break number two rod and spun the piston inside the damn cylinder? Holy bajolies, man. Like, talk about impressive. Yeah, look at that. Oh, there you go. Now, if these uh, cylinders weren't busted here and here and all the other damage, I mean, the engine was pretty well taken care of. I, well, that cylinder's busted too. Look at it back there. <laughs> oh man, Justin's here. We're going to get his reaction. I'll see y'all on the update. Hi guys, new day, new dollar, something like that. I don't know. We're back on the Malibu. Me and Justin just had to take the air hammer and, uh, well, I started with a hammer and a pipe and that didn't work. So I used the air hammer while he put tension on the crank bolt to get this thing to roll over enough so that we could get the uh, torque converter bolts out. Doing weird stuff, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, basically, we got a snowstorm rolling in. We're like, What time is it? We're probably two, three hours away from it's 35 degrees outside, it's been raining ridiculously. My, my yard's absolutely flooded, and it's about to freeze in a couple hours and then turn into snow. This big snowstorm that's coming through, uh, I don't know, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, everything. We're in Indiana, so uh we are going to pull the replacement engine i pulled this out of an hhr the other day um actually it was that same day uh, a few seconds ago for you guys you just watched me uh take the head off see the pistons and all that that was four days ago maybe um and that same day i bought an engine off of uh my buddy who owns a yard over here uh, he pulled a smashed HHR in here about a, it was less than an hour and a half. We had the, this engine out. So we're going to go ahead. It wasn't, it was less than 200k miles. I think it was like 150 or something. I don't remember. Uh, it's pretty clean. So it's not terribly, you know, old or high mileage or anything. It did run drive. So I'm going to go ahead and put the timing set in it. And uh, it's just, I mean, it's easy doing the car. But it's even easier when it's hanging in the air and Justin's still taking a busted block out. So, uh, it's probably going to go time-lapse for a little bit, but uh, I'll make sure you guys can see everything and see how to do a timing set on any GM 2.0, 2.2, 2.4 Ecotech from the first year, which was like 98, all the way up to the last year they used them, which was 2012 or 2013, the first half of 2013. Well, that's not entirely true because there's 2017 Equinox out in the yard with the same issue. Uh, it's in the lot and it has a 2.4, so... I don't know what year they stopped using them, but at least in the Malibus, it was 2012, 2013. But commence the time lapse.
All right, guys. So here's real quick. I just want you to tear this down. That's what the inside of an Ecotec looks like. You got your chain here. Don't lose your finger when you do that because you will. Because I got the tensioner out and everything. These are your VVT cam sprockets. Um, they got to come off to do the chain. And then the chain loops down through this section of the head, through this section of the block, and down here around the crank. Now the secondary chain here, it runs the water pump and the two uh, balancers. Uh, I'm trying to think of what they're called. Because there's no weight on the harmonic, so it's just a crank pulley, that is. So these are, uh, keep the engine from shaking basically. I can't remember what they're called. It'll come to me way too late. But this crank sprocket usually slides on and off. You get a new one because you gotta have your dot and all of that. But you take the guide out, which runs up to here. No, I'm sorry, tensioner bar, because the tensioner comes through this hole and pushes on that bar to tighten the chain. And then this is a guide. It just bolts here and here behind that and that's your oiler um it comes with a new one of those as well crank sprocket you pretty much never have any issues with this uh inner chain um i've had a few motors engines whatever you want to call them where this little tension right here like that's that right there's just because it's not pumped up uh because they are hydraulic they work off of oil pressure but sometimes these will go bad and you'll get a ticking in even and then you'll change this chain and it still ticks and it comes from this area. It's just that uh, hydraulic tensioner there. I thought there was one. I thought there was two on these, but I guess I'm wrong. I'm think I must be thinking of four seven Dodge or something. But anyway, you just uh, pop cam sprockets off here. Pull the chain, drop it, get the guide tensioner and guide out. Undo it off of here, and then you can either pull it down or up and get the new one in. So uh, back to the time lapse, you can see me do that. Uh, one other thing is you can tell this chain is factory because it has the one black link here, which basically lines up to this dot. But I don't think somewhere around here, it should have two links next to each other with a blank one in the middle. Kind of like you see with my fingers here now, like these two would be dark and that one will be blank. And that lines up on one camera or the other. And then I guess, I don't really know how the fa how they do them from factory because there's not enough marks for you to mark everything up. But the new chain, I'll show you here in a minute, uh, there will be a mark that lines up to this dot, which always has to be at the five o'clock position in order for everything to work. And then your exhaust uh, will point here and your intake will point here and it'll mark, it'll line up on all the marks. And then you put the tensioner in and it's done. Super easy, but we'll get into that when I start doing it. Back to the time lapse. we missed there but uh i guess i'll find out in editing here's the motor complete as i said you've got that mark there see how it winds up to the star that says intake and then over here's this mark winds up to the diamond that says exhaust and then down here okay guys so last night what you just saw just a few seconds ago uh, we were swinging the motor in the Malibu. Uh, as you can see, I'm pretty sure I mentioned a few seconds ago for you guys that uh, we were having a snowstorm. And we have indeed had a snowstorm. We have been out in the old XJ, XJ having a good time. Can't beat that. But what I wasn't able to do because my phone died last night, I just chipped out playing with rubber thing probably frozen solid we got the motor in this uh still kind of waiting on the catalytic converter thank you still waiting on the catalytic co co converters because there's actually two there's one that comes directly off the manifold and then another one directly off of that um and then i have to grab the right battery but there she is justin if you want to do the honors we're going to fire this thing up and see all the beautifulness. I actually pulled this car out this morning. It's been sitting here not very long, but it's got heat. It goes through all six gears. Everything works on it. No uh, engine lights for anything other than the missing catalytic converters. The car's perfect. And those brand new Cooper tires. They drove all the way up this steep driveway, past the Jeep, past the Ram, 
and then backed in here and then I was moving it back and forth being funny because it was doing it but that's it guys that's a uh, 2012 2.4 Ecotec now sorry gloved hands and whatnot this week we've got the Corvette will be coming soon that one's that's a that's a mess it's an 84 yeah we'll get to that this here is a 2017 Equinox that got dropped off the other day. I think I told you guys about it already. Uh, same exact engine that's in the car, uh, but this one's got a massive, massive oil leak. When you start the car, it comes out probably faster than you can pour it in. So we got to figure out what's up with the oil leak. Um, for now, got the shop cleaned up. We're going to get the quads out. We've already been playing in the Jeep. It's done. We're going to park it. We're going to get the quads out. We're going to have some fun. Remember, throw a like, subscribe. Don't cost nothing to you. It just helps me out. Gets me in the algorithm. And we'll see you on the next one.